Yo, what's up guys? It's Noah here. Uh, in today's video, we're going to be breaking down the Week 14 Thursday Night Football Showdown slate on DraftKings. We should have a pretty decent game this Thursday night between the Steelers and the Vikings. Um, it should make for a pretty fun showdown slate given all the, you know, the good pay-up options that you have. So many, you know, elite fantasy guys like Justin Jefferson, Deontay Johnson, Najee Harris, you know, Dalvin Cook if he plays. If he doesn't, you've got Alexander Madison who's been like an elite fantasy running back whenever Cook's been out. So, there's a lot of really good payoff options, a lot of guys with a lot of upside. Value-wise, you know, we'll kind of talk about some of the cheap guys I do like to try and fit in a lot of these payoff options, but you know, we'll talk through this showdown slate, break it all down, go from top to bottom, hit on all the playable options, all the guys that I do have interest in, and then towards the end of the video, we'll kind of talk through, you know, roster construction, how I'm looking to build out my lineups, who I like to play at captain, you know, if there's any correlation that I think you should be doing, we, we can discuss that too. But before we get started with the breakdown, guys, please do, as always, hit the like button down below. I do always appreciate the likes. If you're new to the channel here, make sure you do click that subscribe button as well. And if you have not yet, check out the sponsor of the video, Prize Picks. Go sign up for Prize Picks. Use code NOAA when you do sign up for Prize Picks, and they will match your first deposit. They will give you a free bet. Up to $100, you can take a look at what Prize Picks has to offer. They are more of a player prop based DFS site, so you're basically just picking the over or the under on players' projections. As you can see, they already have fantasy point projections posted for Thursday night's game. Um, they'll probably add some more as we do get closer to kickoff. They have fantasy point projections, and they also have you know uh, player props, so like passing yards for the quarterbacks, rushing yards, receiving yards, receptions, touchdowns. Um, you can basically just just about bet on everything over on Prize Picks. They have a ton of other sports too. NBA, college basketball, college football. Um, check out Prize Picks. Sign up. Use code NOAA, and they will match your first deposit. They will give you a free bet up to $100. But let's go ahead and take a look at this showdown slate. We're going to start off at the top. So Justin Jefferson, our most expensive option on this slate, and it you know it makes sense because Adam Thielen is going to be out for this Thursday night game. Uh, Adam Thielen got injured in their last game Sunday, and we saw Justin Jefferson just get a massive amount of volume. He had 14 targets. 11 catches for 182 yards and a touchdown, 38 DraftKings points last week from Justin Jefferson. You know, the matchup against this Pittsburgh secondary, I don't think it's like amazing, but I mean, Justin Jefferson is just going to get so much opportunity. He's going to get such a high amount of volume that he is clearly a top payup option. I think he's probably one of the top projected players overall on this slate. Uh, you know, with DraftKings being full PPR scoring, getting guys like Justin Jefferson that can catch, you know, six, seven, eight balls that can easily get you the 100-yard bonus. Like Justin Jefferson, we've seen the massive upside he has. Um, and especially without Thielen, his target share is going to be massive. So really, really like Justin Jefferson here. Definitely one of the top plays on the slate, in my opinion. Dalvin Cook, we're going to have to wait and see if he's able to play. So I am recording this video on Wednesday afternoon. Right now, we don't have any update on Cook. He went through, uh, he sat out Mondays, kind of, you know, walked through. And then I think he did return to practice on Tuesday, but it was like a limited participation like, I don't think Cook plays, but this is literally like a true question mark. It's a true game time decision. We probably won't find out about Cook's status until, you know, probably an hour and a half before kickoff when inactives are announced. So just keep an eye on this. I think if Dalvin Cook plays, it's obviously a little scary just because we don't really know how fully, like if he's fully healthy, we don't know what kind of workload we can expect. But I would assume if they're going to put Cook out there that he is healthy enough to get his full workload. So if Dalvin Cook plays and he's good to go, I think he's a pretty strong payup option as well. If he does not play, then we can look to Alexander Madison at 9,800, who would be a really, really good play if Cook were to be out. You know, we saw last week whenever Cook was out, 25 touches for Madison. They they use him as a workhorse running back, you know, whenever Cook doesn't play. Um, we saw it earlier this year against Detroit, um, in, against Seattle. He got 30, like he just gets so much opportunity whenever Cook's off the field. They basically just give him Cook's role. Like Cook, normally Cook gets like 18, 20 touches. If anything, Madison gets more volume when Cooks or like than Cook does when he's healthy. Um, just because they really don't have anyone else behind Madison that you are worried about taking away touches. Whereas Cook, you know, Cook has a good backup behind him and Madison. Madison, there's no really there's no good backup behind Madison. So I would expect massive volume for Madison if Cook were to be out again. In 9800, he would be one of the better plays on the slate, right up there with Justin Jefferson, in my opinion. Um, but that's news we're just going to have to wait and see on. I'd assume Cook doesn't play, given it's a short week. And, you know, this injury was supposed to be pretty serious. And somehow he's already, you know, could come back. But I think he sits it out regardless. We'll know, you know, Thursday, probably an hour and a half before kickoff. Make sure you're paying attention to an active as always. Um, but then we got the quarterback. So we'll talk about both quarterbacks real quick. Kirk Cousins, 10400 Then you got Ben Roethlisberger for, you know, a little bit cheaper coming in at nine k. You know, on, on showdown sites, quarterbacks are normally always going to be pretty safe, high floor options. Now, 
We obviously obviously saw Monday, you know, with Mac Jones, like that was just a complete floor game. I mean, literally the worst game a starting quarterback could ever have. Mac Jones literally threw the ball two times, had like 20 passing yards. This is not something we should we shouldn't be worried about any sort of situation like that. I mean, this is a good game environment. It's indoors. I'd expect Cousins to throw the ball 30, 35 times at minimum. You know, Kirk Cousins is never really he's never a guy you consider a high upside play, but we've seen him throw for 300 plus yards in multiple games this year. You know, he can throw for multiple touchdowns. He's got actually some upside. Um, I think this game has some sneaky shootout potential. I know the total in this in this game isn't massive. Like I think it's only like a 43 total, but I think this game does sneakily have some shootout potential. Um, Kirk Cousins, I think, at 10-4 is probably my preferred of the two quarterbacks. Big Ben at 9K, you know, he has not really shown much of a ceiling this year. He only has one game over 20 DraftKings points. But Big Ben's going to throw the ball plenty, um, especially, you know, if game script gets a little, you know, it gets in their, you know, not in their favor and they're forced to throw. Like, let's say Minnesota get, gets out to our early lead. Maybe Big Ben has to throw the ball 35, 40 times. He's still a riskier option. We've seen, that, you know, Big Ben, like, Big Ben's receiver, so specifically Deontay Johnson, like Deontay Johnson can have a, you know, eight catch, 100 yard touchdown game and Big Ben, you know, not really do well. So normally if I'm playing a receiver at captain, I try to pair the quarterback with the receiver. I think this is a slate specifically, you know, talking about the Steelers receivers. I'd be fine playing like Deontay at captain and not playing Big Ben with him just because I think Deontay or Claypool, one of those two can have a big game without Big Ben being a must. Now, I think if Deontay and Claypool both do really well, then yeah, that probably means Big Ben's also doing well. Um, but we've seen like Big Ben can throw the ball 30 times and Deontay Johnson get 10 receptions just because they, you know, he targets him so, so much. Claypool, you know, he's more of a big play threat. We'll talk about him in a second. I think, you know, in order for Claypool to have a really massive game, that probably means either Deontay's doing really poorly or that means that, you know, Big Ben and Deont or like all these guys have, you know, have a good connection and they're all doing really well. Uh, but like Deontay, it tend to, I mean, he's just been a complete target monster this year, getting double digit targets in literally like every single game except one or two. He only has two games this year with less than 10 targets. Like he's just getting so much opportunity. You know, him and Justin Jefferson are clear alpha wide receiver ones in this game. Um, you're probably going to get 10, 12 targets for both Deontay and Justin Jefferson. If you can play both, I mean, by all means, jam both of them in. It's going to be really tough, though, to play like both those pay up receivers and get like one of the quarterbacks. So, if you're playing Justin Jefferson and Deontay, you're probably going to have to like sacrifice and not play both quarterbacks. You might only play one of the two, or you might have to go like with a cheaper captain, which on this slate, I don't think there's a ton of cheap captains I love. You know, we'll talk about KJ Osborne as a value. I think he's in play. I don't know if he's someone I'd be using a ton in the captain spot, though. But Deontay at 12 or at, uh, at 10 2, you know, with how much opportunity he's getting just volume wise, he is a clear, strong option as well. And like the running backs, I mean, we already talked about Cook and Madison. Obviously, Cook, if he plays, is viable. If he's out, Madison would be a great play. Well, Najee Harris, I mean, he's just been getting a ton of volume too. Like he's getting 20 plus touches a week. We know they're going to involve Najee Harris a ton in the passing game. We know he's going to be on the field for 85, 90 percent of the snaps minimum. Um, he's going to get probably all the goal line work. At 10K, I mean, Najee's a very high floor play. I do question a little bit about Najee's ceiling, just because this year as a runner, we haven't seen Najee Harris really you know, have a ton of games where he goes for 100 plus yards. I mean, the only game this year, I think he, he only has two games this year with over 100 rushing yards. Like he hasn't been very efficient as a runner. He just gets so much volume that it's really easy for him to score 14, 15, 16 DraftKings points because he's getting 25 touches. Now, can Najee Harris go out there and score 30 DraftKings points? It's possible. If he does, he probably has to either get into the end zone multiple times or have, you know, a game like he did earlier this year where he catches just a ton of passes like he did against Cincinnati. I think Madison is just, you know, a more efficient runner. I think he gives you a little bit more upside than, than Najee Harris does. But both Madison and Harris, you know, obviously assuming Cook's out, those guys have a ton of upside. They're going to get a ton of volume. Um, I think Madison's ceiling's a little bit higher. I think both guys are very high floor plays. There's a lot of good pay-up options. I mean, Justin Jefferson, Deontay Johnson, you know, they're both alpha wide receiver ones that are going to get 10, 12 targets probably. you got the quarterbacks you could obviously go to. You got, you know, Najee Harris, who's a true workhorse running back. You got Alexander Madison, who would be a true workhorse running back if Cook were to be out. And then you have Cook, if he plays, that you could pay up for too. So a lot of really good pay up options. You can't go wrong with any of these guys that we just talked about, you know, in the 9K and up range. Then when you get down to the mid range, there's some guys here that I think are playable too, like Chase Claypool at 7,400. Obviously, the ceiling on Chase Claypool is there. We've seen a very low floor this year, though, from Chase Claypool. He's he's had a lot of games with like less than 10 DraftKings points. 
but he's a big play upside, you know, big play receiver. He's a guy that can always break off a long touchdown catch. You know, Big Ben, you watch him throw deep balls. Like, it's not pretty, um, but he's going to try and get the ball to Chase Claypool, I'm sure. You know, these guys, it, it feels like every week Big Ben throws at least one deep ball to Chase Claypool. Last week, they, I don't think they connected. Um, or he did have a 40-yard reception last week. He just didn't get into the end zone. But he's a big play receiver, you know, a guy that can break off a long, you know, touchdown at any moment. It's a little less likely with Big Ben at quarterback, but at 7,400, I think Chase Claypool, you know, you're just kind of banking on the talent here. I think Chase Claypool is, Chase Claypool is a very talented receiver. We've seen the low floor from him just because I think with the, the poor quarterback play, with how Chase Claypool runs his routes, he's a lot more likely to, you know, he, his floor is just not as high than Deontay Johnson because Deontay Johnson just runs so many quick screens, you know, slant routes. He's low A dot routes. That's why you see Deontay Johnson get so many targets. Whereas Chase Claypool, he's running a lot of vertical routes deep down the field. And Big Ben, you know, he's just not going to throw the ball deep a ton. He will give Claypool maybe one or two targets deep down the field. you got to hope they connect. If they do, you know, Claypool's got upside. He's a riskier option, but I think the upside's definitely there. He would be, you know, on my radar for this showdown slate. Pat Fryermuth, you know, he's going to be probably in every down tight end with Eric Ebron out. I'm pretty sure Eric, Eric Ebron's out again this week. Um, I don't think Ebron's returning, like, anytime soon. Yeah, he's on IR, so... Um, Chase or uh, Pat Fryer moves should be you know in every down tight end. He's more of a a touchdown or bust kind of guy. Like you're gonna need him to probably catch a touchdown to put up a good game. It's really hard for him to put up 15, 20 draftings points without finding the end zone just because he doesn't get a ton of you know a ton of targets. He's not gonna get like six catches for 100 yards. Like they're just not gonna they're not gonna throw the ball that much to Fryer Muth. Um, he's more of like a red zone kind of big body target. He probably gets five, six targets. You got to hope he finds the end zone. If he does, it's 6,600. He's pretty likely to be a decent play at a salary. He's touched down or bust, though. I think Chase Claypool gives you more upside in general. I think Chase Claypool is a lot more likely to get 100 plus yards. Whereas Fryermuth, you know, if Fryermuth if puts up a good game, it's probably because he has four catches, 40 yards, and a touchdown. Whereas Claypool, he could have six catches, 120 yards, and a touchdown. I, I'd be more likely to play Claypool in that scenario. Um, and then, then you got Tyler Conklin, who. I really haven't played much at all this season, um, but I think, you know, in this scenario this week without Adam Thielen, like, they're probably going to involve Tyler Conklin a lot more. I mean, last week he did get nine targets. Thielen did get injured last week very early on in the game. He only played, he played six snaps, Adam Thielen did, before he had to leave the game. So, basically, I mean, basically they played last week without Thielen. You know, Thielen didn't play a ton before he got injured. So, we got nine targets last week, last week from Conklin, and he played over 90% of the snaps. He played 95% of the snaps. So, he was best, basically in every down tight end. He's another guy that I kind of question what his upside truly is. I think he's another, you know, he's very similar to Fryermuth. He's probably going to have to get into the end zone to put up a ceiling game. But if they're going to use him this much in the passing game without Thielen, yeah, there's definitely some opportunity for, for Tyler Conklin. I think both tight ends are touchdown or bust, but they're both in play. Um, I think Chase Claypool, though, is the is probably my favorite guy in that mid-range, just, you know, banking on the talent of Claypool, banking on the, the big play upside he has. I would rather be rostering him than these tight ends that probably, you know, need to get into the end zone to do well. Uh, but then we can start to talk about some value. So below 6K, KJ Osborne is for sure the first guy that stands out as a value play. He saw seven targets last week. Um, he was heavily involved, you know, after Thielen went down. He played over 90% of the snaps. Basically, Justin Jefferson and KJ Osborne were kind of, they were basically just their every down receivers. You did see them involve D.D. Westbrook in the slot. He played 42% of the snaps. But I think we should expect... K.J. Osborne and Justin Jefferson to play over 90% of the snaps. K.J. Osborne, if he's going to get six, seven, eight targets, I mean, yeah, 5,600, he is a very strong value play on the slate. You know, I don't I don't often pay down at captain. I think, you know, normally in the captain spot, you want to be trying to fit in those top-tier receivers, even, you know, quarterbacks who could play at captain. But I think if you really want to try and jam in a lot of these top-tier guys, you're probably going to have to go cheap at captain to make that work, or you're going to have to play some of these dart throws. I think playing KJ Osborne at captain is fine on this slate. I think he has enough upside to be a potential winning captain, just given the price tag. He's definitely my favorite value overall. And I think he's the safest value and probably the, the value with the most upside too. You know, 5,600, I definitely like KJ Osborne on this slate. Now, James Washington, you know, even with Juju Smith-Schuster out, like James Washington just hasn't seen a solid enough role to where you really want to be rostering him. I think no one's, like nobody's going to play James Washington. He's going to be super low owned. On a showdown slate, there's always a possibility that James Washington catches a long touchdown or you know breaks off a long catch or something. But I would be just more likely to fade him. Um, at 5K, it's really hard to consider James Washington a great play at that price. The defenses I think are fine. 
Um, I'd be a lot more likely to play the Vikings defense than the Steelers defense just because we've seen Big Ben is literally a statue. I mean, he just, he'll take a ton of sacks. He, he'll he fumble the ball. Like, I think the Vikings defense actually has some upside here if they can put some pressure on Big Ben. And so far this year, the Steelers offensive line has shown no ability to block well for Big Ben. He really doesn't have much time to throw in the pocket. So I think, I think at 4,400, the Vikings defense is a pretty decent value play. I think the kickers are fine values. Um, I think playing one of the two kickers is totally cool on this slate. And then if you're looking for like some cheap dart throws, I think D.D. Westbrook at 2,200 is probably my favorite like punt play on this slate just because I expect him to be involved as the, I, be, I basically expect him to be the wide receiver three with Thielen out. I think, you know, Justin Jefferson's obviously going to be the alpha wide receiver one that we expect to get a lot of targets. I think K.J. Osborne is going to get probably six to eight targets. But you should see some opportunity for D.D. Westbrook. I know last week he didn't really do anything. I mean, he got one catch for negative two yards. He only saw two targets. But he was the wide receiver that saw the increase in play at time. He played on 42% of the snaps. So basically, Justin Jefferson and K.J. Osborne played 92 and 91% of the snaps. D.D. Westbrook played 42% of the snaps. And then um, Adam Thielen played six snaps before he got injured. And Dan Chisnia played 7% of the snaps. I don't even know who that is. Um, I don't think he's someone we would want to be playing. But D.D. Westbrook is going to be the guy that they involve in three wide receiver uh, sets. I expect him to be the wide receiver three without Thielen at 2,200. I mean, if you're going to get a wide receiver playing on 45, 50% of the snaps at this price point, I think it's totally fine to take a shot on D.D. Westbrook. And again, with, with how many good payup options there are with all these top tier receivers and running backs that we want to try and jam in. I mean, if you want to get these guys in at the top, you're going to have to play someone cheap. I think D.D. Westbrook at 2,200 is my favorite punt play. Ray Ray McLeod, Zach Gentry, like I don't really like these guys that much. You know, Ray Ray McLeod probably gets like two, three, four targets minimum um, or maximum. Like I don't think his upside is really that high. I would probably just play Westbrook if I had to go to one of those two guys. Zach Gentry at 2,600 probably gets one or two targets. He's he's touchdown or bust basically. You know, he's not going to do much else except I think he's mainly just out there blocking. Like I, I want to look at his snaps from last week. Um, I don't I can't tell how many routes he ran. I'm, I, at least I'm not able to view that, but I would assume Gentry, like, I don't think he played on a ton of snaps last week. He played on, let's see, let's see, so type in Gentry. I should have already had this pulled up. So Gentry played, he played on 50% of the snaps last week. In terms of his routes ran, I don't know how many routes he ran, but given that he only saw two targets, I doubt he was really out there running a ton of routes. He was probably just out there blocking. He's, again, he's a low upside, you know, minimal guy you probably don't want to be playing. Um, he's just touchdown or bust. Same with Ray Ray McLeod. The rest of these guys I'm not really on. Um, you know, I don't even know how to say this guy's last name, but Kine, he was basically the backup behind Madison last week with Cook out. I think if, if Cook's out again, you would see him op operate as the, you know, the RB2. He got, four or he got four touches, two carries for zero yards, and he had two catches for four yards. Again, they, they just don't really involve these guys. Like whenever Madison is the num their number one running back, like whenever Cook's out, Madison is just the guy that gets all the touches. They just really don't involve anyone else. So I don't even think, even if Cook's out again, I'd really want to play Kine. Um, He wouldn't really be on my radar. I think that's it, honestly. Like, I think value-wise, if you're really trying to go cheap and punt, I think D.D. Westbrook's probably your best punt play down here. Just hoping that, you know, as the wide receiver three for Minnesota, that he gets like four or five targets. And at 2,200, you know, he could turn that into something decent. Um, he could get three catches for 30 yards and be solid at, you know, at his price tag. Especially like if a lot of these big t big time receivers like Justin Jefferson, Deontay, if these guys have really good games, if the running backs do really well, it's very likely that you're going to see like a Stars and Scrubs type of build. You're probably going to see like three or four of these top tier guys in the winning lineup. And then it's just going to come down to which one of these cheap guys puts up six, seven, eight drafting points. And that definitely could be D.D. Westbrook. Um, so I think he's my favorite value overall, like punt play. And then obviously K.J. Osborne, he's a little bit more expensive, but 5,600, I think K.J. Osborne is probably the strongest value overall just in terms of safety and upside. But that's really it for this showdown slate, guys. You know, talking about Ross construction, again, it's a slate where there's a lot of strong payup options. You can't go wrong with Justin Jefferson, Deontay Johnson, Najee Harris, Madison, if Cook's out. Like, you can't go wrong with any of these guys in the captain spot. I think Justin Jefferson and Deontay Johnson, I, I like a lot of captain. I tend to play wide receivers and running backs a lot more captain, especially wide receivers. Just because on DraftKings, given the the full PPR scoring, given you know that you get the 100-yard bonus, getting these, re these receivers that can catch 8, 9, 10 passes that can get 100-plus yards, these guys just can go out there and break a slate. And we saw Justin Jefferson last week score almost 40 DraftKings points. So definitely like Justin Jefferson at captain, even though he's the most expensive, op expensive option. I like Deontay a lot at captain too. 
you know, if we were to play Justin Jefferson at captain, I probably would pair him with Kirk Cousins. You know, we talked about playing Deontay at captain. I don't think you need to have Big Ben, but I think in order for Justin Jefferson to have a good game, like if Justin Jefferson has another 100-yard game with a touchdown, that probably means Kirk Cousins is doing pretty well. You know, Kirk Cousins has shown much of a higher ceiling than Big Ben has. He's definitely my preferred quarterback in this game. So let's play Justin Jefferson at captain C. You know, what that leaves us after we plug in Cousins too. We're left with 57, 75 left per player. So if we really want to try and jam in multiple studs, you know, a couple more of these payup options, we're going to have to probably go cheap, play a guy like D.D. Westbrook. You know, we could play K.J. Osborne as well. I don't know how I would feel about having four Vikings in my lineup, like four Vikings guys, or three Vikings receivers with Cousins. I guess I could see that working out. I think in order for this to work out, you're probably going to need Alexander Madison to not do well. Like I would think Madison in a scenario where all these guys are in the winning lineup, that probably means Madison is not having a good game or Cook is not having a good game. So I think it's fine to do this, but I would definitely not be playing the running backs if you're playing three receivers. Um, but if we plug in like all these guys, we're left with 76.50 left per player. So we could maybe play Deontay. That would leave us enough for James Washington or one of the kickers or one of the defenses, which I'm you know fine with. I don't really like James Washington that much, but I think you know we could play the Vikings defense here. Um, you know a five-one type of lineup. I don't really look to to build a lot of these these very often. Like rarely do I go into a slate saying I need to play a lot of players from a certain team. But this is definitely a slate where I think there's so much. I think the value, the best value is coming from Minnesota. Um, and I think my favorite payup option and Justin Jefferson's also from Minnesota. So it's kind of one of those slates where I think I'll be a little bit more heavy on Minnesota than I will Pittsburgh. I don't think I'll be having, I don't think I'd have a ton of, you know, five, one lineups like you see here, but I definitely think this could work out. You know, if, if Minnesota goes out here and wins big, which is possible, you know, Pittsburgh, we've seen they'll turn the ball over big, Ben will take a lot of sacks. So you could definitely play the Vikings defense with, you know, three or four other Vikings. Um, so that's a build that I kind of like. You could take out Deontay, though, maybe play Najee. Um, that, that really wouldn't make much of a difference, though. You're still looking at the same options, uh, you know, left. You could maybe play, like, Big Ben and Chase. Well, you couldn't get Chase Claypool in there, but you could play Big Ben and Conklin. You know, that's another kind of 5-1 lineup. I don't know how much, you know, like a, a lineup like this, I think, is really unlikely to be the winning lineup. Like, it's really unlikely that five or four Minnesota receivers with Cousins and then Big Ben as the one guy from Pittsburgh. Like, that's really unlikely to be the winning lineup. But you never know, man. Crazy shit happens on these shutdown slates. We saw, what was it? Like, on Thanksgiving, Taysom Hill was the winning captain with the, the Cowboys defense. Like, I mean, shit can happen like crazy like that. So, really, when it comes to showdown, I don't look too much in a correlation. I know we kind of talk about it a little bit, but this is definitely a slate where I think I'll be a little bit more Minnesota heavy than normal just because a lot of my favorite values are coming from Minnesota. I think my favorite payup options are from Minnesota as well. But I definitely like these Pittsburgh guys too, especially Deontay and Najee. Just the, the massive amount of volume they get every week. They're always going to be good payup options, high floor options. It just so happens that you also have a really high floor, high upside option in Justin Jefferson, who stands out as a strong play too. But I think that's it for this showdown slate, guys. You know, it's a really fun slate. There's a lot of ways you can go um, in terms of payup options. You're going to have to make some tough decisions. Like if you're playing one lineup, choosing between Justin Jefferson or Deontay Johnson, choosing between Najee Harris or Alexander Madison, like that's those are some tough decisions because all those guys project really well. All of them have a very high floor, very high ceiling. Um, but we'll see how this game turns out. Hopefully it'll be a good game. You know, I don't play too heavy on these shot on slates. I do get most of my action in on prize picks. And I, the reason I like prize picks so much is because you can just kind of you can take the overs on all these big name guys. So like you could take the over on Deontay Johnson, Justin Jefferson, Najee Harris, Alexander Madison, and, and basically just build a lineup where you're betting on all the star players. You know, on showdown slates, you can't really build lineups with all those star players because of salary. But on on these slates or on prize picks, at least you can just bet the over on all these guys, you know, that uh, are all these like top tier receivers and just hope that we get a game where all these, you know, alpha wide receivers ones where we get big games from Justin Jefferson, big game from Deontay Johnson, big game from the running backs. And if that happens, you know, that could be a winning strategy on prize picks. Um, but you can take a look at the, the fantasy point projections that prize picks has. As you can see, this is their board right now. They might add some more stuff as we get closer to, to kick off Thursday night, but they also have, you know, receiving yards for the, for everyone in this game. They have rushing yards, passing yards, receptions, basically, you know, everything you can imagine is on prize picks, you know, NFL, NBA, they got a ton of other sports. Check them out, guys. Sign up. Use code NOAH. They will match your first deposit. Prospects will give you a free bet up to $100 when you do sign up with my code. But best of luck on this slate, guys. I appreciate you watching the video. Hope you enjoyed. We'll see you in the next one.